You're listening to the Broadway Podcast Network. Visit bpn.fm to discover more. Hello, I'm Jesse McAnally. And I am Andrew DeWolf. And I'm Liz Eston. And welcome to Musicals with Cheese, a podcast where I try to get Andrew and Liz to like musical theater. How are we all doing today? Oh, I got one thing to say. Six? More like sucks. <laughs> what a great start. Ah, wow. Play the music. We're done. Thank wow. you. <laughs> that, all right. That's two. your one joke for the episode. We're done now. Yeah. yeah we're serious now. <laughs> yeah. No, we're, um, we're getting into it. Man, uh, there, we could have done bits. We could have been like, no, I'm the best queen. No, I'm the. No, we just. Sucks. <laughs> I am not of that opinion. It was. But- it was the laziest option, so we took it. That's the that's the cheese way. That's the musicals of cheese way. True. Um, <laughs> in case you haven't picked the lowest up, lowest hanging fruit. We 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 pick that. <laughs> in fact, we are that. We are that fit as people. <laughs> we are three of the lowest hanging fruits out there. Mine hang pretty damn low. Mm-hmm. Mine don't hang as low. See, that was a low hanging fruit joke right there. I just. <laughs> Man, I wish my head would just come off after this conversation. We're talking about six. Jess, we're getting a divorce. <gasps> I'm, and I'm going to die, I guess? Uh, okay. Divorced. Beheaded. Died. Divorced. Beheaded. Survived. And tonight, we are... Listen up, let me tell you a story A story that you think you've heard before We know you know our names and our fame and our faces Know all about the glories and the disgraces I'm done, cause all this time I'll be just in a stupid rise So I picked up a pen and a microphone History's about to get overthrown Um, Six is a musical written by Toby Marlowe and Lucy Moss with music and lyrics by Toby Marlowe and Lucy Moss based on the wives of Henry VIII. Six began previews on the February 13th of 2020. I wonder when it's going to happen soon at the Alina Horn Theater, then known as the Brooks Atkinson. On the day of its scheduled Broadway opening, March 12th, 2020, what happened? All Broadway theaters were closed due to the novel Yay! COVID-19 COVID! pandemic. Yay. Um, Six would resume Broadway previews on... The 17th of September, 2001, and it officially opened on October 3rd. Sorry, 2021. I, they went back in time. <laughs> did I say it opened in 2001? Two, that's what you said. They went back in time and opened <laughs> with, with urine years. town. <laughs> oh no, September 20, 2001. Um, it officially opened on October 3rd, 2021. Um, the plot of six is divorce, beheaded, die. Divorced, beheaded, survive. From Tudor queen to pop icon, the six wives of Henry VIII take the microphone to remix 500 years of historical heartbreak into a euphoric celebration of the 21st century girl power. And this new original musical is the global sensation that everyone is losing their head over. Um, Yeah, that was obviously their press release. So six, we have cock-teased our audience for the show for a good while. Even when we did our live show, I made a joke that instead of Popeye, we were supposed to talk about six. Which we were, <laughs> by the by. We weren't. I was just being a little bit of an he asshole. Pulled, he picked Popeye first. I did, because I knew if we talked about six, um, we would have gotten booed and possibly uh, vegetables thrown at us. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to feel about six. So I like a lot of aspects of it. And I don't like other aspects of it, but I feel like the stuff that I like is stuff that's like actually good. And the stuff that I don't like is like my own personal opinion. If that makes any sense. Yes. So (laughs) you can appreciate for what it is, but it's not your kind of thing. Yeah. That's kind of what I think. Um, Like I think that it is technically very good. 
I would even call it perfect. It, it accomplishes basically everything it needs to, and it's not overly long in any way. Like, there's nothing you would even cut. Like, there's nothing that's like, why is this here? Um, but at the same time, I'm kind of groaning every single time they make like a historical pun or something. Like, uh, you know, I'm just like, eh. this is just like <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> It is not just I, like Hamilton, Andrew. It is just like it's Cats. Not. <laughs> it is. I did send that to you. It is the exact <laughs> premise of Cats. It it literally is the premise of Cats. Yeah. A bunch I, of I, people I, sing about their names, and then they decide who wins, and no one really wins. The only losers are the audience. And Cats. <laughs> and Cats. Yes, of course, in Cats. Yeah. So, yeah, Six is in a weird place for me. Um, I think that I really like the vibe of it in that it's like a concert. I think that that's really interesting, and I don't think we've seen a different show do that yet. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Hedwig. In Hedwig's the probably the inch. biggest one. Um, that'd be the closest. Um, but I think that the vibe on this one is a bit different, especially with there being six. And it's like, it's a, it's like a girl band. Yes. You know, like they, they like are doing the dances and it reminded me of like K-pop type stuff um there was a k-pop yeah. musical on broadway at the same time as six too there you go um so yeah so there's like a lot of stuff that is good but it's just kind of like a i don't really know what to say because i don't want to be mean but there's a lot of stuff that i didn't like well but i don't think it's bad <laughs> before we get into the negatives liz you have very different opinions on the show what about that okay so during the pandemic, I got really into the soundtrack of Six. Like, I would listen to it a lot, and I talked about it so much. For my birthday, my boyfriend bought me and him tickets to go see Six in, on Broadway. And we went to New York for a couple days, and I saw it live, in person, with the same cast that we all watched. And it is... I'm a big fan of this show. Still am. I listen to it in my car when I'm driving, like, to work. So, like, whenever. So, I love this show, but I do see where Andrew's coming from. There's some stuff that could be glaring from one person's specific pers per perspective. So, but for me, from my perspective, as a woman who, watching a show where all the characters are women talking about their experiences without interruption from a male figure, that is incredibly powerful to see when, like, we, there's so many musicals out there that are kind of about women, but are mostly about guys. Like, this is just women talking about themselves. And the end where it's like, we don't need a man to define how we are. That's the thing a lot of people are still learning in modern society. Mm -hmm. So, there's a lot Six has to say. And so, I take a lot from it. I also saw it live, and it's, it is like a concert. Like, it's kind of, it has the vibe of a concert when you're in the room. And I had, like, back seats, like, all the way in the back. Like, I could see the whole stage. Like, I was in the fucking nosebleeds. <laughs> like, I think I have a picture of it. I can send it. But, like, yeah. it's it's an incredible experience that I had. But I understand, a, from another person's perspective, like, this didn't work as much for them just because of the experience they had. Mm -hmm. So I love Six a lot. So I'll be your fangirl for this episode. Um, I will probably mostly say nice things. But I understand where Andrew's coming from completely. Like, some things just might not have vibed fully, and it's not perfect a lot of the time. But just the reason it exists and what it does for me and a lot of other, like, women, non-binary people, queer people in the theater space, it's really important in that way. Yeah. God, this didn't win Best Musical, did it? I'm trying to remember. No, it lost to a strange loop. Oh, ooh. So that's a yeah, better that's, choice. Yeah, that case, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've also um, seen that. So we love you, six, but that. you're no a strange loop. No. A strange loop is is special. A strange loop is incredible uh, in, in, in its a, own way, and, it's and like, it was its own kind of. Mm, yeah. But it is very much a story about a man from a man's point of view, but a very important show. It's an important show in a different way than six is an important show. Yes, we're all. Um, every show is important in a different way, unless you're Moulin Rouge, then you just kind of exist. So. Um, Moulin Rouge and Cats, you know, yeah, <laughs> those are the only true. two. Yeah. Um, so Six is something I to compare to another single syllable musical that we've covered recently. Ish um, is Ride the Musical, 
which is a show that I love and have revisited the album to. I have never revisited the show itself. I've never like turned on the pro shot. And I think that's my experience with six. Um, I watched it once for to get all the content, get all the concept text. I don't think I will ever watch or see the show like live or like it just wouldn't be my thing. And I know that I will revisit the album knowing the context I bring from the show itself. And it is a much more enjoyable experience ever since properly taking in this show. Um, sincerely, it does. If you've only listened to the album and not watching context, um, do yourself a favor and either go see it on stage or, uh, yo ho, yo ho all over the slime tutorials on YouTube. Um, I do want to bring that up a little bit later, but um, there is a YouTube check video out. that's like the best moments of six, part one and two. So if you want to get yes. the highlight reel of the stage show in a piratey way, in a compilation way, that also exists. I think this is like one of those shows that's like piracy, anti piracy, like in its existence. It's kind of like a Taylor Swift era's tour or avoiding uploading concert footage of Taylor Swift is not affecting people getting the era's tour. Same way, I think the marketing department of Six is like, yeah, let the fucking bootleg be out there so people will know what we're about and then more people will come to see us, which I think is part of its success. Yeah. This really, to me, feels like a show that live would be all about the energy, yeah. less so yeah. than like, you know, like a lot of other stuff, like technically speaking, the bootleg kind of just steals everything because it's just like, you know you're there for the story and the bootleg has all of that. Yeah. And you know, whereas this, it's like, there's not really much of a story to be told. It's mostly like, a, it's a concert apps atmosphere. It's like, you have to be there, yeah. you know? So in some regards, like we can't really, except for Liz, we can't really speak on the actual experience because it is like a concert. Yeah. Um, but we can talk about what happens like as far as like, in a musical sense. Yeah. What I will speak to about, like, mm -hmm. what Andrew said about the concert environment is, like, being in a room with a pack full of people who are clearly addicted to TikTok and only know, like, two of the songs. Um, it's, it's like, initially kind of, like, a weird energy. It's, like, initially, I was, ne I stood next to a teenager who wouldn't stop singing. Oh, God, like, I'm so sorry. Uh, but eventually, the crowd got loud enough that I couldn't hear them anymore. <laughs> So it's like, okay, great. And then all the clapping kicked in. But like the energy of the room is so like electric because they, they bring you in constantly. They're like always like pointing around. It's like, okay, I'm here in the room and I'm with them. So like And does that you help get your experience? Really into it. Even on the sad songs, you're like there's like I sat like this, like the edge of my seat. I was like, I must engage in this very sad song. <laughs> like, it's a incredible energy. So that's I will say about that in terms of the experience for Jess, you wanted to say what you're going to say. Um, okay. I was curious if that added to the experience or distracted from it, but um, I'd say yeah. added um, uh, the beginning was a little bit like kids talking to their parents about how these songs are on TikTok and they're cool. <laughs> and it's like, mom, this is on TikTok. All you want to do is such a good song. And I'm like, do you know what that song's about? Boo. Yeah. Like, uh, oh my god, oh my, just stick with Don't Lose Your Head. Come on. Like, don't. Uh. And then the show starts and it's like, oh, we're all quiet in the moment. So. You have a more presence on theater TikTok than Andrew or I. Is this the most like memed musical theater piece on I'm, the tickety talks? At the time I was paying attention to theater TikTok, absolutely. There's a lot of don't lose your head TikToks. But nowadays, I don't know what it is that theater TikTok is attached to. I know Ride the Cyclone was a big hit for a mm -hmm. while. And um, that's which is it's... another remake of Cats. I feel like we just <laughs> yeah. need to keep remaking Cats, and you'll have a successful show. The kids love when people introduce themselves. <laughs> <laughs> it makes them feel like they have a friend. Because <laughs> they can't be social anymore. That's true. They forgot how. Yeah, they're so stuck they in the house to... in 2020. What else are they fucking going to do? They have um, to introduce themselves to these musical theater characters that'll be their emotional outlet for the next two God, hours. We're such fucking boomers we now. Are... God damn. <laughs> if, I, if I had to take a wild shot in the dark on what theater TikTok is into now, I would guess they're back at Heather's again because they always go back to Heather's periodically. Heather's goes back. I remember when so. Be More Chill was everywhere too. Um, so this show involves all six of the wives of Henry VIII, each one basically presenting their case for why they should be head, the the big queen. The leader or, of the band. 
The leader, not the okay. Big queen. Not like I had the most sadness. It's like I want to lead the band. None of them show leadership skills really, except maybe the last one. Yeah, she's the best leader. But she well, also she survived. So, I mean, it's like reverse of um, um, little cat that sings memory <laughs> and dies. <laughs> Grizabella. Grizabella, yes. Um, she is like reverse Grizabella. I did not have to uh, participate in that episode because I had to be somewhere. So, <laughs> yes. Um, so. I guess what else can we really unpack with six? I mean, six is, if it's your thing, you'll know it's your thing. Like, right away. It, like, the moment you turn on a bootleg or listen to the cast album, you will know exactly if this is going to be your thing. Um, and I think it's hard to say yes or no if that makes something bad if it's just not for you. And which I wish I had gone in with that context for some of the other things that we complain like boomers about, like ride the cyclone or be more chill, where it's just kind of like, maybe this just isn't for me and that's okay. Because yeah. I think a lot of a, a lot of binary thinking of thing good or thing bad based on experience, and we're, we're, we're pretty guilty of that sometimes too, Andrew. Yeah, we, we, we've had our fair share. All humans are. I mean, yeah. I read the Be More Chill book as a kid, so I inherently was already going to like the musical, so like... Mm-hmm. Um, but we do want to talk about the things we don't particularly like, if that's all right. Um, yeah, absolutely. The Hamiltonification of this specifically, um, I feel like this was this did come from a genuine place. We aren't trying. I am personally not trying to say this is trying to grab onto that Hamilton like train because it was already in development right way before Hamilton was like even on Broadway in 2016. Um, it was an Edinburgh Fringe Festival um, where it just kind of was something that they threw together, basically. Just a, a fun little idea. And then they kept working on it, working on it, until it eventually became its final form. It In the design choices, um, it does feel like it's trying to ape a little too cool. Like, it feels like it's trying to be cool sometimes. <laughs> but it does the thing that I wish Hamilton would do, which is take the past and reinterpret it through a 21st century mindset. That is like one of my favorite things about this show is how iconic each of their outfits are, how strange and fitting it is, and how much I wish Hamilton had did something like that in its like production design. <laughs> Every time I'm like, this is what I want Hamilton to look like. It's so the fucking boring, kind of lame looking like old white men dress. Yeah, they just dress up like yeah. I'm just imagining Lynn I... in one of the outfits from six now and just like <laughs> So much God. body hair. <laughs> so much hair, I suppose. What we I guess I, I just don't like that they are using, like, modern slang in a way that I, I just, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a boomer now. <laughs> Maybe just we're just old and me. lame. Like, what do you mean? What specifically got you cringing? Because they will say things like hashtag and... Yeah, I think it, it is that type of stuff where it's like, I, I just, it's it's one of those things where it's like, it's cringe, but I can't describe why. Like. Yeah. It's like because you can't relate. It just is. It's like a. It's like a. It's like a like a forty five year old man trying to write like a teenager and like imagining what yeah. they say. I like that's what you're kind of saying, right? I think so. You and feel I, like I, that I doesn't feel that genuine. You mean <clears throat> like if a twenty four year old was writing this, it would kind of not come across the way it does. Because I do kind of feel that tiny shred of inauthenticity. Yeah. Yeah, like I just I don't think I don't feel like. I, I don't feel like people actually talk like that. Well, they're also you know? being very performative here. Like, they are on stage in the context of that. So true. people act differently when they're trying to kind of put a face out there. And both the writers it, are it 29. May, so. Yeah, they are on the younger side. They're, cr- they're younger. It may but... just be because I'm not... I mean, I guess I'm younger than the writers here. But it may just not be because I... Uh, in a part of the TikTok generation and trends and all that. Yeah. yeah. And like, it, I don't do any of that stuff. I don't understand the culture. And it, it's clear that that's who they're appealing to. So, yeah. And it worked. Like, it, they got really big in the pandemic. So, and the show is quality. Like, I can say <laughs> this is a perfect show as far as everything they're trying to do. This is as perfect an execution as I could ever imagine for something as kind of. I wouldn't say it highbrow or it's just kind of a weird choice. It's a very specific choice executed perfectly. Um, I don't think I'm going to revisit it a ton though. I, I listen to the songs cause they do tend to come up on my thing, but 
I, I mostly find myself a little annoyed by it because I'm annoyed by the things that they're parodying and paying tribute to. So is that really the fault of them for doing such a good pastiche of this type of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Which means they did it perfectly, but I didn't like what they were paying tribute to. It's like a Jimmy Buffett co cover band. It's like, yeah, you're probably doing a really good version of what you're trying to do, but at the end of the day, it's still Jimmy Buffett. You know, really... Everyone who loves Six should just take us not being the biggest fans of it as a compliment. Yes, you are better than us. You got, you got two straight white men to not like your show. I, <laughs> hey, 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 who the fuck said I didn't like this? Yeah. <laughs> Don't put words in my mouth. Jess said he didn't like it. Um, but who cares what we think? How about we compare our opinions to that of the New York Times theater critic at the time, Jesse Green? It's time for previews. It's time for previews. It's time for previews. All right, Andrew, why don't you take a look at this review? Truncated. This is a very truncated, only pulled out the most interesting quotes version of this review. Because uh, I don't want anyone to think we just kind of are reading the full thing. Andrew, why don't you read this for us? All right. This is uh, the New York Times. Jesse Green published on October 3rd of 2021. All right. Are you an Elsa or an Anna, an Elphaba or a Glinda, or for those with more classic tastes, a, Ver a Vera or a Mame? What a ridiculous way to open <laughs> a review. And for reference, I'm a fucking Anna, okay? Like, come on. Yeah, I'm an Anna as well. What am Everyone I? Everyone is an Anna. So you're an Elsa. I, I, well, you're an Elsa. You're, you're an Elsa. An Elsa. If you have to ask if you're an Anna. Anna, can I be um, the weird Evan Rachel Wood girl from the second Frozen? I didn't see it, so sure. Uh, you can be the Duke of uh, Weseltown. Weseltown! Yeah! <laughs> okay, Andrew, are you an Elphaba or a Glinda? Andrew's an Elphaba. Come on. Um, yeah, probably. I'm the sister in the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Ethan Slater. Yeah. Um, a Vera or a Vera Mame? Or Mm, I don't remember which I one is remember. which. I don't know. Vera's what the friend, uh, and Mame is the main lady in Mame. So I'm the friend then. Oh. So I'm Vera. Yeah, I'm the friend. I'm definitely not Mame. And yeah. Vera is a horrible drunk. That is their one I'm character trait. I'm definitely Vera then. Then <laughs> I am definitely Vera, yeah. I am Gooch. All right. <laughs> I've never seen Mame. I don't know what any of these words mean. In, in six, the queenhood is powerful pageant about the wives of Henry VIII uh, Tudor London is the place to be if you're looking for a sextet of truly empowered, empowering megastars. This feels like white man talking this like the kids do. This is a white man talking about a female-led show. You know, he's being positive, though. Like, yeah, it's, I, I think. It seems positive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's worded in a positive way Just so far. Just look that website recheck where New York Times views are good or not. Um, did they like it dot com. All right, I'm going there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep reading. And though after seeing a tryout in Chicago, I wrote that Six was destined to occupy a top spot in the confetti canon. Two questions nagged at me. How can a show formatted as a Tudor's Got Talent belt off among six sassy divas also be a thoughtful experiment in reverse victimology. What? And how can history be teased, ignored, and glorified all at once? I will say this I is probably am, one of I the am, better New York Times like summaries of like actual analysis. Yeah. Yeah, I am trying to like I he's saying something here, but I'm trying to figure out what he means by reverse victimology. Okay, that is a good question. I feel like he's like taking their victimology and using it against them or trying to compete with victimology because they are kind of doing that. Yeah, it's like the... Okay. All right. Yet somehow Six by Toby Marlowe and Lucy Moss isn't a philosophically incoherent jumble. It's a rollicking reverberant... Uh, reverberant, pardon me, blast from the past... Though gleefully anachronistic, mixing 16th century marital politics with 21st century selfies and shade, it suggests a surprising, disturbing, and ultimately hopeful commonality, which shouldn't work, but does. 
I mean, that's I, I that's kind of the dichotomy I feel with it. Like this feels like it shouldn't work. This should feel cringe, but it kind of flows very well for me. Also, this man doesn't know what the word shade means. Some intern told him to put that there. I swear. I don't know. These New York Times critics, they got their hands on the pulse. <laughs> totally. Ben Brantley ben knew Brantley exactly. Ben Brantley. Kids. He left early because he wanted to start his TikTok career while he was still young. Well, no, actually a skate park opened up down the street from his house and he just didn't have time to go to Broadway anymore. I was too busy. <laughs> ripping. I was too busy. I was too busy on the rails. Grinding um, the rails. Skateboarding. <laughs> um, how about you just skip to the last bit, Andrew? Sure. That six puts just such a rewritten history on stage is a great thing for a pop musical to do. Let's not quibble about its accuracy or the way it drops its contest framework cold just in time for the sing-along finale. I mean, I think the dropping the contest framework is actually one of the better parts That is of the arc. That makes it worth yeah. it. That makes it an arc. That's, that's the big moment. Like, can you imagine if, if it was just like they just... They sing six songs and then the audience like cheers which one they liked the best and then it ends. They get a little remote control. <laughs> I know who'd win every like, time. So who would win? Cat- Catherine Parr, the fifth for- one. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna vote for Anne Boleyn because she yeah. makes blowjob jokes. True. Aww. Just like Miley Cyrus. I'd vote for the one whose baby died because she made me sad. Oh, because she, oh the yeah. The one that died during childbirth. Yeah. Oh yeah. I also her vote for baby. Her. Never got to see her mother. Yeah. His yeah, mother. Well, the baby boy. did see the mother from the inside. Oh. That's disgusting, Andrew. <laughs> but true. He's not wrong. <laughs> That's just how having a child works. No, no, no. A stork drops it off and you pull it out your butt. Just, uh, yeah, do I need, so, just sometimes the, the stork the kills the, the mother. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Andrew the stork shows up you. and rolls a dice and if you if it lands snake eyes it, it murders the mother just saw the movie storks and thought it was accurate i thought you were about to say that stork arrives rolls a joint and just lives in your house for five months also that. just like your dad bro bro um do we agree with this review i mean according to the did they like it you liked it so I think it's a good review. It's actually it actually pretty seems, good for New York Times review. It seemed insightful, even, which is is interesting. Usually, these are just uh, meandering, and they like to use large words, and that's it. Jesse Green <laughs> has a much better writing style than Ben Brantley. He tends to stay on the point, but he also says a lot stupider shit sometimes when it comes to appropriateness and talking about other human beings. <laughs> he tends to dehumanize a lot of a lot of folks he writes about. Maybe he's being careful at this one because the entire cast is women. Maybe. And yeah. it was, let's, after a year of no Broadway and coming back to six, it probably tastes like, you know, the best apple pie you've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, Andrew, remember when we were talking about Godspell and Bren Brantley went in the middle of the summer to some masked up version of Godspell and he acted like it was yeah. the greatest thing ever because, hey, yeah. I have theaters back, guys. Guys, I went to see this like mid show. It's some random place, but it's the best thing I've ever seen. And you know what? I think this show sucks, but my God, the fact that I saw it here and actually got to see it. Yeah, I think I honestly I, I agree with a lot of what he's saying, and I think he raises some questions that I'm not sure if he answers in the non truncated version of this review. Yeah. Um, but they're at least interesting to think about. So, I mean. I feel like he's asking these questions. Those are kind of rhetorical questions. Like, how is this show so fucking good? Is basically what he's saying. How did this show not fuck up? How about we go on to a mid-show and we'll talk more about this. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt you in the middle of the show, but we've got a show out of you. Today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon. And over at Patreon, you got tons of stuff commentaries, bonus episodes, monthly hangouts with the three of us. Don't miss out on those. They're coming back for 2024. And you've got a backlog of cool shit over there. Um, and also, I don't bring this up again, but you get discounts on our merch over at Patreon. Um, so don't don't forget that, guys, if you want to get yourself a Musicals with Cheese t-shirt to, to, to wear around and everyone can think you're finally cool. Um, who's supporting us currently on Patreon, Andrew? Oh, man. Our current patrons, it it's a lot. Okay, 
Danielle Rennix, Rennix, Justice Stampede, Ewan Cassidy, Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Nathaniel Stacey Coom, Joseph Evans Green, Mary Lou Choquette, uh, John Vanales, Russ Walker, Musical Hell, Emily Gracie, Kyle Summers, Janae C., Anna Loskatova, Sarah uh, Den Blaker, Evan Ball, Zachary Torres, Rora Morasso, Mara Foloin, Lisa L., Scoot in the Technicolor Dreamcoat, Liz Lim, Nothing is Certain Except Beth and Taxes, Thesbian, Robert Benjamin, Jessica T., Mitchell Young, Chai Teacup, Chris Marcote, Kijimri Anastasio, Trevi Joseph, Leela, Possessed Washing Machine, Nick Roten, Puffy Boy, uh, Sydney Hicks, Annabelle, Billy Clifton, Andrew Wright, RJ Noriga, Julie McLennan, uh, Bjorn Hermans, Toriana Frazier, Sammy the Adequated Mount Jacobson, Kaylee Blazier, Cinemageddon Reviews, Villainous Miss, Sophina Ali, The Omega Geek, Paige Pearson, Maddie Wargle, Elisa Erdman, The Red Caboose Kaboom, Gold Plated Kiki Moro, Julia Balder's Daughter, Rex and Gino Sanchez. These people give us a little financial support that helps us keep the lights on here in Musicals with Cheese and do a lot of cool things. So why don't you join them, get all those fun perks, and also we have our Discord server where you can hang out with us and ask us correct questions directly, and they have become a little family there. They all hang out and do things together. It's nice. They all say good morning and good night and give each other kisses. So go and join us over at Patreon and our Discord. <laughs> Let's talk about these songs, and I feel like we can kind of go through all of them, more or less, because they're so... I mean, I mean, quickly, obviously, but talk a little bit about each of them. So X-Wives, the opening number, the one that takes the old rhyme and turns it into basically a thesis statement for the entire night. Divorced, beheaded, survived, but just for you tonight. We're divorced, beheaded, You're gonna find out how we got unfriended Tonight we're gonna do ourselves justice Cause we're taking you to court Every true to rose has its thorns And you're gonna hear them live in consort Divorced, beheaded, died Divorced, beheaded, survived But just for you tonight We're divorced What do we think about it, Andrew? I think it's a it's a good way to open it up. Um, and obviously this is a, a very memorable number. I think this is the one we were trying to do earlier. Uh, yes. Yeah, we, we and I, I fucked it up abysmally because there's <laughs> only three of us. There's not six You weren't just going to do a circle. You gave up on that as soon as we pitched was, it. <laughs> was, this a, was this one of the TikTok hits? Uh, um, no. No. Not no, much. it seems like it would have been because the listing thing. Yeah, does that's tend what to be I was up. thinking. Like this. Okay, it might go have, ahead. I, don't see, I watched a wedding dress TikTok a while ago that like had the this version has this song in it, but that was like from like a month ago. So. Yeah, mostly it was just six related stuff. Um, it's very small, scant lines. Like this already feels too long. Like divorced, beheaded, like all that. Um, the only thing that I think is like divorced, beheaded, live is the only one I remember being used as audio. Just that transition. But that's about it. Mm. Um, I can only imagine how cool this is live when <laughs> just have everything click in and just have that power of their voices coming at you. I wish we had more of that. I know they tend to sing back up, but this is so pretty sounding. And I feel like we don't talk enough just how 
things blend and how perfectly it sounds. And I don't tend to be a big fan of handheld mics in my musicals. I find it very distracting in Spring Awakening when they just pull out the fucking hand mic for no reason. I love the fact that everything is done through the hand mic in this show. It works so great for me. It it helps with the concert vibe as well. Like uh, they actually have physically have mics. Mm-hmm. And Liz, what do you think about X Wives? I really enjoy it. Um, it's a really good opener. Um, I don't go back to it as much as some like the individual songs, like per character. But I do enjoy it when I'm like doing a whole album listen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, it's a really good opening number. It really sets the framework and. Um, I think it's really impressive. Also, it does have somewhat of a following on TikTok, from what I can tell. Um, like the X-Wife song itself. But it's this also might be about a show called X-Wife, so I have no idea. I can't navigate TikTok on a computer. TikTok is garbage so, um, on a computer. It's terrible on a computer. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy this song a lot. I think it does a really good job setting everything up and getting the character introductions and dynamics going so when you get into the show it's like okay this mode makes sense Mm -hmm. well let's move on to no way way. there's no way you must agree that baby and all the time i've been by your side i've never lost control no matter how many times i knew you lied have my golden boom gotta keep my cool baby your fun running around with some pretty young thing and even though you've had one song with someone who don't own a wedding ring no matter what i heard i didn't say a word no baby i put up with your sh- like every single day but now it's time to sh- and listen when i say Honestly, one of the less memorable songs in the show. Um, Maybe that's a controversial opinion of mine. But when I think of this song, the only thing I remember is they censor shit by saying shh. And I was like, oh. That's a classic. That was like classic 2000s radio, I feel like. (laughs) I mean. mean, Shiitake mushroom. Oh, yeah. yeah. I always remember like the it's my shh. It's my shh. Oh, yeah. The Gwen Stefani. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but aside from that, um, who is that based on? Who is that musical style based around? This is, uh, they they have queen inspirations in the program, which is why I love oh. this page. Oh. Um, so she was inspired by Beyonce and Shakira. Shakira feels very out of pocket to me, but Beyonce makes sense. So. I don't know. Shakira made sense, but Beyonce seemed confusing to yeah. me. Yeah. Well, then maybe they nailed it. I don't know. <laughs> All right. It's a good mix of both. <laughs> Um, I, I love her energy. I love the performance. This song just kind of washes over me. It does its job in the moment, but all I think about is shh. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the next song, and that is Don't Lose Your Head, the Miley Cyrus uh, Avril Lavigne song from Ambeline's point of view. <laughs> well, it was Lily Allen and Avril Lavigne, so you were 50% correct. Ah, uh, dang. Grew up. In the French court, we oui, we oui, bonjour. Life was a chore, so she set sail. 15, 22, came straight to the UK. All the British dudes lay. Epic fail. Ooh, I wanna dance and sing. Politics, not my thing. Ooh, but then I met the king, and soon my daddy said, You should try and get ahead. He wanted me. <laughs> Obviously, kept messaging me like every day. Couldn't be better than he sent me a letter. And who am I kidding? I was pret a manger. Sent a reply. Ooh-hoo. Just saying hi. Ooh-hoo. You're a nice guy. I'll think about it maybe. XO baby. Uh-oh. Here we go. You sent him kisses. I didn't know I would move in with his missus. What? Get like, what was I meant to do? Sorry, not sorry about what I said. I'm just trying to have some fun. Don't worry, don't worry, don't lose your head. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. L-O-L, say oh well, or go 
I feel like I was a lot more into this one I really than like I was. This song. Honestly, either of the previous two songs. Yeah. Really? You didn't you like this better than X Wives? I think so. I like that uh like sort of pop punk kind of feel it's going yeah. for. I think No Way kind of serves as like this is how the concept works. So yes. It's not the strongest song. So I think Don't Lose Your Head is when they really get into it, and that's when the pop punk also I love pop punk as much like Andrew, so like I dig it. Um, I like it. Um, I just find the character very annoying, <laughs> and maybe that's just me. <laughs> I feel like you're not supposed to like this character at no. all. No, but yeah, that's the point. I, I feel they they were. Is this this is the one that there was like more famous than the others? I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know any of these fucking people so she is, at all. She is very famous <laughs> because to get a divorce from the first wife, he had to leave the Catholic Church start a new church, get divorced in the Church of England, which also helped him regain religious control of the country, so not fully Anne Boleyn being hot is the reason the Church of England exists. So, like, it's a little bit of both. I'm a history geek as well. Sorry about that. Uh, I'd say that she's probably the most famous of yeah, all the XY. so the reason culture. the Church of England exists is partially he wanted to marry Anne Boleyn, and Catherine wouldn't let him have a divorce in the Catholic Church, so... Thus, new church, get a divorce, have new wife. So. I mean, he had new wife. The and then, the wife after he might have cheated. After she might have cheated. There's no proof of that. So Yeah, I mean, that's... Henry cheated. There is proof of that. Henry always cheated. Henry had bastards when he was married to Anne Boleyn. Yeah, yeah but that's just, that's just allowed, though. Yeah, it's, yeah it's allowed. <laughs> He's a man. Um, didn't yeah, you watch didn't Damn Yankees? Watch. Not um, only is he a man, he's the king. Literally. <laughs> I remember that part of the Lion King. Yeah. Where it's like Simba uh had Nala uh, beheaded because, you know. Wait, but she wait, cheated. wouldn't Nala be the first wife? Oh, no, he beheaded all of his wives. Simba's just a <laughs> bastard. This is this is not connected. Um uh, okay. I love it. Um I, I I do see the influences. I do see like the, the girl influences. One thing I wanted to say earlier, but I think now's a good point. The songs are written in a way and the show is constructed in a way that anyone that takes on a role can just bring their own take to these songs. And I think that's so fascinating and so exciting and why I think different casts will really make a different show entirely, depending on who they lean more towards in their interpretation. Um, I don't love the current Broadway interpretation. I prefer the UK interpretation a little more, which is a wholly different vibe as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I... Once again, it's all depending on your taste. Uh, and that's why this show is so fucking hard to talk about is sometimes it's just a taste thing. Um, let's move on to Heart of Stone, um, Jane Seymour's really sad, really quiet white girl song, which I'm guessing, I'm not looking up, um, like a power yes. ballad kind of Adele kind of Adele vibe or Taylor and Swift. Sia. Oh, Sia. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes don't indeed. watch music, kids. Yeah, don't watch it. You can build me up. You can tear me down. You can try, but I'm unbreakable. You can do your best, but I'll stand the test. You'll find that I'm unshakable. When the fires burn, when the wind has blown, when the water's dried, you'll still find stone. Yeah, I think this one was really good. It's really um, good. I wish there was another song that was more like ballady like this, but I feel like that. I mean, that's all other one. Broadway shows, though. Sure. Yeah. But... What if I like that though? Well, <laughs> don't go see six. Yeah, no, it's really good. I like it. I think, I think it's, it's really pretty. Um, I just, I feel bad. It's so early in the show. Like this feels like a like middle of Act Two kind of song. And they kind of blow blow it on you in like the first half of the first, yeah, basically the first half of the show. Um, and that's my only complaint is I wish it, I I wish I had more time to look forward to this. But then again, it would just be memory at that point. Yeah, 
it's it's tough because historically we don't know jack shit about jane seymour besides the fact that she liked henry and she died in childbirth that's all historians know about her so i mean they could have written anything the but they just took... kind of had to chalk it up to that like i but I, I don't know. I think it's effective. I feel like that's yeah. probably the reason why it is yeah. so effective. That, no, I agree. They can it's kind effective. Of take... It's just like we couldn't. There's not. But there's a few. Only a very little direction you could go in with this. Like mm-hmm. she liked Henry and she died in childbirth. Like that's all we got. And she doesn't really do much in interacting with the rest of the girls. Yeah. Even though Anne Boleyn was her. Uh, she was her. She was Anne Boleyn's lady in waiting and Catherine Aragon's lady in waiting. Yeah, she doesn't interact much because there's a lot of arguing between the queens and yeah, yeah, they barely interact. Well, she always like pops in to like just be like morally fucking annoying. Like, (laughs) actually, I had it the worst because my my baby. My baby didn't know its mother. Yeah, I think she's kind of it's it's weird because they gave her this really sad song, but whenever they're like any other scene, she's kind of the joke character. (laughs) <laughs> Which maybe that's part of the reason why it's good that she comes so early. Cause yeah, get it over with. Then we never have to go down that way again. Yeah, it's um, a really good song, though. It is a great song. Um, probably the one that will get played on your 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 MP3 players the most. It'll be your number one on the Spotify's whatever. Um, get down! Let's go! Every day, head back for a round of croquet because I'm a player. And tomorrow... I'll hit replay. You, you said that I tripped you. Cause I, I didn't look like my profile picture. Too, but too bad I don't agree. So I'm gonna hang it up for everyone to see. And you can't stop me. Cause I'm the queen of the castle. Get down, you dirty rascal. Get down, you dirty rascal, get down. Get down. Cause I'm the queen of the castle. Also, Nicki Minaj and Rihanna are the listed ones on the program, so yeah. I hear you. Um I'm surprised yeah. her tongue wasn't out more if it's gonna be all of them. Um I like this song a lot. Um I like Britney Mac doing this song specifically. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've ever heard the British version of it. Yes, I have, multiple times. It is very grating to my ears. <laughs> that one where she's like, I'm the king of the castle. I'm the queen of the castle. Get down, you dirty rascal. It's very unpleasant. She's very British in the British <laughs> recording. Like, That's yeah. horrendous. Oh my aren't, God. Some of them aren't super British, but then like Anna of, Anna of Cleves and Anne Boleyn are just so British. Very British. So British. I love it. It kind of ruins the vibe of that section because isn't it? It's. I feel like it's supposed to be more taunting than yeah. that. Yeah. And that just feels like it kind of stops the song flat as opposed to keeping the energy up. And I know it's supposed yeah. to kind of stop so you can drop the wub wubs. But yeah, um, this is just about her like getting her own way and having her nice little castle. Yeah. Like, I like it. It's fun, it's upbeat, it's energetic, and she got hers. She, I think she's the only one that backs out before everything else because she's like, oh, yeah, I won. No, no, she, no she backs out because she lost. Because she, she backs out because she won in life. <laughs> she won in life, so she like lived, she lived the longest of all of them, I'm pretty sure. So. Yeah. Um, she had her good time. Which means that she can't win. Yeah, yeah, so she loses the whole thing because she's had a happy life with a castle. Because like. she didn't push up, put up with any ish from the, the king. Yeah. I'm glad that they end the show by realizing how fucked up it is to have a competition about how shitty your life was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we um, all should learn. But isn't that what Cats does too? <laughs> like, yeah, but Cats, all of... yeah, but Cats thinks it's a but good Cats thing. But Cats sucks. <laughs> Dark, sexy Mannix taught me all about dynamics. He was 23 and I was 13 going on 30 we spent hours strumming the lute striking the chords and blowing the flute he plucked my strings all the way to G went from major to minor C to D tell me what you need what you want you don't need to plead cause I feel the chemistry 
like I get you and you get me and maybe this is it he just cares so much it feels legit we have Um, all you wanna do, all you wanna do, babe. Um, I mean, I think you can figure out the instructions. Who is it, Jess? Like, real fast. So. Um, Ariana Grande. Yes, and the the other one. I I don't know, Andrew, throw out the other one. I don't have it. I don't know any of these pop stars. Britney Spears. Britney Spears. I see Ariana mostly in just the hair, because she has that tight pony. The is the dead giveaway. Um, I hate the character. I love this song. And this song made me feel different about the character without changing really much of the content. Like hearing this song and watching someone perform it are two very different experiences. Yeah. <laughs> and my God, whoever performed it on Broadway. Samantha Polly. Incredible. So good. So good. Um, <laughs> Like how she's delivering these things, but getting progressively more depressed, hurt, damaged, all these things by the horrible things. These people did um and ha- especially when it's like i thought you were going to be different why aren't any of them different oh um but i'm sure it would hit people that have that experience a lot b- better than me who's just like has that empathy side so it is very effective i really like this song a lot it- it's very impactful especially seeing it in person is incredibly impactful because the entire theater just goes quiet by the end it's like wait we were cheering for that and holy shit we just cheered for a lot of shit we shouldn't have cheered for it's incredibly powerful um yeah i really like the song a lot uh i it's the structure is really good and also Catherine howard as i'm gonna go off on history for a minute because i after i got into six i did history digging Catherine howard as a figure in the Henry universe, I guess the Henry cinematic universe, you could call it, um, Henry VIII in a cinematic universe, the HVCU. So she is portrayed largely in some circles as just a flighty, slutty person who slept with a lot of people. But the, f- the reality of it is she was a teenager and she died at age 19. So she, she Ooh. lived the shortest of all of them. Anne of Cleves, like, beat her by so many years in life. And the way, the framing of history a lot of times is she's flighty and slutty and a whore and she's the worst. But just hearing, and beheaded for being a whore. But for the framing of, I was sexually abused and manipulated by a series of men who saw me as a sex object is just very important. Especially in, like, I hate to bring it up, but in a post-Weinstein thing like men are powerful and they take advantage of women and it's still a lesson we're learning today and even like all of hollywood and all of business like we need to acknowledge that and not abuse women like this like come on guys do better especially when they're fucking 13 years old uh yeah history bros stay sexist history (laughs) bros are very sexist (laughs) history sucks in a lot of ways if you're a nerd uh, I do yeah. want to say, and I'm, I don't mean to interrupt, but it is the one thing brought up in the fucking Wikipedia page is there is no proof of there was any abuse towards her. I'm like, knowing that information, her doing anything was abuse. Yeah, literally her existing was her being abused. Like, like if you say at 13 years old she was in a sexual relationship with a 25-year-old man, I don't know how old the first guy was, but, like, come on. Come on, historians. How do you... Wait. How do you say that someone who got beheaded didn't re- receive any abuse? The exi- th- this is the exact quote from Wikipedia, um, quoting the Tudor Times, which also looks like its own Wikipedia source, which is like, um, the show is based on historical figures with varying degrees of accuracy. For instance, it portrays Catherine Howard as a survivor of rape, which is debated amongst historians, which, knowing the information you told me, um, she was a child... <laughs> 
I think it well, it is debated amongst historians because some historians are fucking um, gross. Are sexists who probably are like the age of consent should be eight or something. Oh, <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of like right, very right wing YouTubers. Like, there's this one guy from a while ago. I saw in, like a commentary video. It was just like the women, the the best time for them to have children is at age twelve, and it's like okay, I'm okay. gonna throw the fuck up. Hot damn, history sucks. Um. But you know what I would say to the, all those historians? I would say I don't need their love. Um, just like Catherine Parr said to a lot of people. I've got no choice. With the king I stay alive. Never had a choice. Been a wife twice before just to survive. I don't have a choice. If Henry says it's you, then it's you. No matter how I feel. belong to you cause I am not your toy to enjoy till there's something new as if I'm gonna give up my boy my work my dreams to care for you <laughs> darling get a clue there's nothing you can do I don't need your love no 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 I don't need your love no no there's nothing left to discuss no In the memory of this musical, um, for some reason, I'm feeling like Alicia Keys or Jennifer Hudson or something. Alicia Keys, you're right. I don't know how to pronounce the second one, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, she... I offend someone. So. Yeah. How's it spelled? Uh, E-M-E-L-I. And the, so it, it's Sande. I think I got that last name. I never heard of this person. So. She's named after an ice cream sundae? E-M-E-L-I. Yeah, so. Emily or something like that. Emily, Emily, Emily Sunday. I don't know. I've never it's heard not this. Emil. Emily heard... Sunday is her like you know. I can't pronounce these southern names. <laughs> yeah. Emily to, Sunday. I don't know how to read. I don't know how I'm doing. <laughs> um, back to sixth. This I, song I, is great. I love this song so much. Recontextualizes this... the entire show. I'm really glad they did this because if they went a different way, this could have been a much worse show. Yeah. So. I will say seeing this in person, like not having this not be in there, I would be much more annoyed leaving the theater. I'd be like, great. I didn't learn shit. But so. let's pretend just for a second. I like pretending. That after this song plays, you were handed a remote and you got numbers one through six and you had to vote. Oh, shit. All oh. right. Place your votes now. <gasps> Which your votes. Um, can I go for House of Holbein and just cheat? Nope. You can't cheat. All you three have to of vote us. for one of the six. Okay, if I was a person, if I was me in, like, November of last year, seeing this, or two years ago, I guess, uh, two years ago, seeing this live, uh, I'd No, you have to vote on their criteria. Don't vote on who has the best song. Vote on who is the most tortured. Who's oh. the most tortured? I gotta play um, by their rules? Yeah, you have to play by their rules. Yeah, Catherine Howard. Number five. Okay. That's where I'm voting. That's all you want to do. Andrew, what about you? Um, hmm. We got got divorced, yeah. beheaded, died in childbirth. Yeah, I feel like the one, it has to be one of the two beheadeds because that sounds awful. Um, so I'm definitely going to go with number five as well. I also like how the beheaded actors, were, they both wear chokers. That was a really nice touch on the Yeah, costume that is theme. a great touch. Very and nice it, touch on I, the costuming. I knew that going in, it helped me figure out who was who a little bit. Yeah. There's a lot of Catherines. Yeah. Um, too many names. <laughs> um, and I'm going to skirt by by not answering. Um, Jess, you have to answer. Jess, you have to answer. Yeah, we both answered. So He doesn't want to answer because he's going to say fucking Anna of Cleves. He's going to say Anna shit. of Cleves, yes. He's literally, he's right, because it's he, on his gonna fucking, oh, alone, look at this guy, <laughs> holy fucking shit, he's really gonna do Are it. Are you gonna say Anna of Cleves? She withdrew from the competition. <laughs> literally, she said I had an awesome life, I oh believe. Oh my god. 
He's, he's literally going to do it. You guys are going to hate me. I know it. But I'm picking Vampire Assassin. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> That's a Red Letter Media reference. Um, oh, wait. I, okay. no, oh, yeah. wait. No, oh, I got right, it. I got right, it. I got fucking, it. I saw that one, yeah. Um, I got it. I saw that, too. Hackle won that episode, clearly. Yes, but he picked Vampire Assassin. Vampire Assassin. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to anyway, put... Anyway, I don't need your love. Topic. No, no, Catherine of Argon. <laughs> that... You picked the you picked the first one. You yeah, she had the to... first wife that just got divorced. Do you know the paperwork to get fucking the change the religion of the entire country? She didn't have to do she that. Didn't have to do that. That was when she... Anne Boleyn was around. No, she had to Look, do I'm this. Look, I'm changing my vote. I'm voting. I'm voting for uh, for Henry the <laughs> Eighth. I'm voting for the Holbein guy because he had to paint a lot. <laughs> He had to put. He had to put up with all these ladies. Wait, he covered. The, wait, he pissed on them. No, uh, the whole wait, the the, Henry called whatever the fuck his name was. Holbein. He had these infamous ways of like treating, making women look better. They do. They mention it in the lyrics of the song. Like, I will look it up if we want to continue discussing. But I will get the receipt. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I We haven't done this in a minute. <laughs> but this will be really, really quick. We're going to do a quick BuzzFeed test. Are we doing a oh, BuzzFeed God. quiz for the six wives? Yes. Oh, my God. Okay. I Wait, already know which one I there's am. There's only three of, there's three of us, and you're opening one quiz. How are we going to yep, do Yep, I'm all the gonna, ugly one. We're all just going to shout our answers, and I'm going to pick whoever convinced me the most. All right. First questions. What is your best personality trait? I'm hardworking, I'm wise, I'm clever, I'm friendly, I'm kind, I'm caring. Collectively, I say we're clever. clever. I'm clever. What is your worst personality trait? Too shy, too competitive, hide my feelings, be too reckless, be rude, I'm too stubborn, too rude. Too stubborn. I think no, too I think stubborn. it's rude. Too stubborn, not rude. Well, that's too. That's two. That's two. Um, hold up. All right, so what's your favorite color? Blue, purple, green, yellow, red, pink. Uh, Blue. Blue. Andrew? Go, go blue. Blue's fine. Blue's fine. Favorite animal? Owl, dolphin, lying, giraffe, koala bear, monkey, koala bear. Owl. Monkey. You're shitting me. I'm taking dolphin. Fuck all of you. <laughs> fuck it. What the fuck? Which of the queens do you admire the most? Victoria, Elizabeth, Elizabeth II, Queen Mary, Queen Mary II. I wish there was like fuck the monarchy. Which one died the fastest? Which, uh, which one... I don't remember. Queen Victoria probably died pretty quick. Let's go with that. Yeah, we'll do yep. Victoria. She's the oldest, which, probably. Which country do you want to visit the most? USA, France, Spain, Greece, Italy, Japan. Italy. Italy. Uh, There's some... Yeah, Italy. What frightens you the most? Death, never being able to return home, losing a loved one, being alone, being forced out of your comfort zone? Large crowds. Large death. crowds. <laughs> death. Yeah, death. Not which, even close. Which would you choose to live, <laughs> live in? A um, bunch of houses. Uh, big pool. Uh, the smallest, the small house. Ba- I'm going with big pool. Um, show is your favorite friends, The Crown, Game of Thrones, The Vampire Di- Diaries, none Grace and Eddie, Gossip Girl. None of them. I have to pick Friends. It's the only one I've actually seen. I guess Fair I've enough. only seen one episode of Friends. So yeah, let's go with that. I've seen no episodes of Friends, but I haven't I seen any of the others. <laughs> Which book them. or book series is your favorite? Harry Potter, Hobbit, Pride and Prejudice, Murder on the Orient Express, Little Women, The Hunger Games. None of these are comparable. Uh, the Hunger Hobbit. Names. I've only the only one I've read is Harry Potter and the Hobbit. So the Hobbit. The only one I've read is Pride and Prejudice. So. So the Hobbit. The Hobbit. Um, which of the favorite, the Henry the Ace wives was your favorite? Um, we decided Catherine on Parr. Catherine Parr, know. right? Let's go with that. I like Jane Seymour. Okay. Let's go. Jane We're Anna. Please, we lived. Lived. we lived. We lived. <laughs> we got divorced. I told you we'd be the ugly one. Well, yeah, yeah. We're, yeah, we're the ugly one. I I said I said I already know which one I am. I'm the ugly one. <laughs> yeah. I think okay, the... Anyway, back to what I was mentioning earlier. Yes. So this is according to Genius, so I don't know the uh, sources, but Tudor makeup usually contained like lead and mercury, which made all them good pale, for your skin. But also, could have fucking killed them. Um, they bathed could have. in urine <laughs> as ammonia and would act as bleach and lighten their skin and hair. Does that work though? How do these people live for more than like five years? I don't know. Like I rewatched that. Uh, so, so I rewatched that uh, Wizard of Oz scene where they get covered in asbestos. I'm like, how are you guys like alive at the end of this scene? Just barely. Yeah, they were just barely functioning. 
But yeah, um, there's if there's probably more info on this I'm not getting, but there's a lot of weird Tudor makeup and beauty regimens that are fucked up. Well, I've been looking for some new regimens to try, so I guess bathing in piss <laughs> is my next go. Where do you get that much piss? I don't know. Maybe, Every servant in the house, maybe, come pee. Maybe Holbein just had a very <laughs> large bladder. I don't know. Let me piss All in right. the tub before we dye your skin. All right, I'm in the tub. Got five minutes to fill it. <laughs> <laughs> My hair doesn't look good. Boy, could this Henry, guy or piss. Your name is. <laughs> hey, 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 cut out drinking the Baja Blast. I don't want to fucking turn green. Baja Blast is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it turns your piss green. Yeah, I know, but it's delicious. Um, speaking of delicious, what is our overall thoughts and our cheese ratings? Um, Andrew, why don't you start? Oh, man. Um, I think I kind of said my overall thoughts earlier, which is that I, I think it's a very good, I think it's a very good show that just isn't really for me, um, which is fine. Not everything is for me. I, I think that it's, uh, very well done, though, and I can definitely see why people like it, um, I would probably enjoy it if I saw it live anyways, though, just because I feel like the the vibes in a place like that would be uh, high energy. Although I might get annoyed by how many TikTok people would be there. That's a that's a that's a we'll see uh, situation. Fair um, enough. Yeah. As far as a cheese rating goes, <clears throat> hmm. I feel like a cheese platter is too obvious, like a, like with six cheeses. So I don't want to do that. Ooh, ooh! You know what? You know what's really fucking good though. Have Have you ever had like a grilled cheese where they actually take like, like, like they have like multiple layers of different yes. cheeses? Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that would be a really good, and that's kind of like a classy but also not classy meal, and that's kind of how I feel about this too. So, I, I think that's a good one. Mm -hmm. And Liz, what about you? Um, I kind of said a lot earlier, but I'll kind of summarize. Um, I this show has impacted me a lot at least from, like, the few years I've been into it. Um, it's really amazing what two queer people, openly queer people, make a show most only starring women about their experiences, and it's very impactful in a space where that is rare. And your, the, your voice, like, me as a woman, my voice feels like it's not important in a lot of space, theatrical spaces, but in six it feels important. Like, the theater was mostly women. It was, like, very comforting. My poor boyfriend was just, like... Surrounded by chicks. <laughs> but it was... It's a really amazing experience live. I highly recommend it. Um, it's like the it's like the sickest quick concert you've ever been to. And you're, and you're out in 90 minutes. So you have a lot of time to just like walk around New York and do whatever the fuck else you want to do. We did not bring so, that up. This is a very short show. Yeah, I, I, went, to the, I went to like 7 o'clock show. I got it at like 9-ish. And uh, I had a lot of time to like get cheesecake and like walk back to my hotel and do whatever else, uh, else we felt like doing. It was a nice, like, also nice, not, nice evening. It's not short because it's lacking in content no. either. It's just short because it's like concise. It's very concise. To it, the it, point, yeah. it knows what it wants to do and it does it and it doesn't hold you hostage yeah. there. And to then you leave. Have like filler shit. Yeah, then you leave and you're good. <laughs> and so. Yeah, no, I enjoy the show a lot. I'm very attached to it. I'm probably very biased in a lot of ways, but I. This is one of my favorite shows. I will generally listen to this in my car tomorrow when I'm going into work. So, um, I'm going to give this... Andrew took grilled cheese, so I'm going to think a little harder. Um, I'm going to give this a really good, like, cheesy quesadilla. Like, Ooh. with some chicken in it and a little salt on the side. Because it's, like, really good, really comforting, has everything you need, and it's very concise and to the point. Hell yeah. I like that. That's a good answer. And I agree, fundamentally. Like, I, when we were in New York, we saw um, some Broadway shows, and every one of them, even the matinees, I'm like, I'm fucking exhausted. That was a lot of mental fortitude I dedicated there. And this feels like it would have been a bright, quick, easy, brisk show. I enjoy it, but I don't think I'm going to revisit it much outside of, like, a specific song or two. I get the appeal. I love the fan base. I actually love how passionate the fan base is. It is a perfect show. It's just not for me. <laughs> and I can say both of those things where it, it both are equally true. So my cheese rating today is the Cheese and Onion Tudor Crisp. Yes, they are styled after the Tudor uh, England vibe. 
But of course. They're discontinued, but hey, wouldn't it be great to have them? So Jess is going to predict the ending of six on Broadway now. Yes, I am. Um, the the end. What what what? Like when you say the end, like it wrapping up. I mean, I mean like it closing. Up. I'm just saying you're gonna make it close on Broadway for you picking a discontinued cheese. Oh, oh yes, yes. Um, it's like how we indirectly this, yes. predicted Sondheim's death that one time a few years. Ago. Oh, that was such a bummer. I know, I, right? We also predicted Angela Lansbury's death, like, and yeah. I was like, oh, she's gonna live forever. She died the next fucking died week. The next like week or so. Early Pedro with cheese is kind of cursed. Yeah, that was a weird year. Um, yeah. You know what else is weird? Our wonderful patrons. Thank you guys for listening. Please follow us on iTunes and Spotify at Musicals with Cheese. We're on Twitter at Cheesy Musicals, Patreon Musicals with Cheese, Instagram Musicals with Cheese. Our YouTube page is Musicals with Cheese. We're going to be posting a lot more there this year. Um, that is our New Year's resolution. Um, so we got, check. We got a thing in the works for the recent next few weeks. So look out Let's hope. Um. Patreon only podcast, Patreon with cheese, email us at musicaltheaterlives at gmail.com. Our keeper of the cheese is Juliet Antonio. This show is edited by Andrew DeWolf, and he does a fantabulous job. Our themes for previews were created by Robin Nash of IOU Music UK. Thank you to the Broadway Podcast Network for having us on the platform and for not kicking us off for divorce beheading our wives. Um, all right, anything else we have left to say? If you divorce your wife, why are you beheading her? What's the goddamn point? Um, I wanted to give her half my money, then kill her. <laughs> ah. Wh- Why did well, you have I don't a understand. Why start an entire new church to get a divorce when you could have just beheaded your wife? Well, it was all... <laughs> <laughs> he uh, fa- it he was... was asking himself that same question, yeah. you know? It was, also to, it was also to gain religious control of England at the time, but, like, that's history, so the fuck that. <laughs> He, he came up with a reason to do it. A he reason. was like, oh, it's, I gotta get a divorce. You know, Amon is just so fucking hot. He <laughs> needs to start a new church. And then also, she he cheated. He slept with her sister, too. I didn't mention that, but oh, Amelin yeah. and his. Amelin's sister also slept with Henry. Like, had an extended affair. And she was played by Scarlett Johansson, he, right? In that one Berlin Do you think he movie, kept yes. her head? She kept her head, though, I think. I don't remember. No, do you, no, no. Like, do you think Henry kept her head and, like, hung it on the wall or oh, something? Oh, like a Game of Thrones thing? Yeah. Ooh, I like that fiction. I don't know if he did it. There's no proof. Just kept he it. did it. He did it. Just he did it. Yeah. Kept it in his room. Historians, fuck you. No one's written it down or anything, and they threw it away after he after Henry died. But he did it. Yeah. Yeah. He definitely. Yeah, he had spikes with the heads. And if he didn't do it, just just sue us for slander, Henry. <laughs> Go ahead. I if wrote it's a whole in... paper about that, about like real life people, <laughs> real like biopic movies, and if you can sue for slander or libel. And the conclusion was no, but I wrote like ten pages about it. Um, oh, I, I, would, I would love it if like Andy Kaufman sued Jim Carrey for Man on the Moon. Wouldn't that be great? Like, I think That'd it's a so great funny. idea. I think we should revive all the dead people and let them watch the movies we made how, about. How them. could Andy Kaufman sue Jim Carrey for Man on the Moon though, when Jim Carrey was literally being? possessed oh, by right. the spirit you're of Andy right. Kaufman. Also, you're right. like, if P.T. Like, Barnum came back to life and watched The Greatest Show, and he's like, he'd be like, great fucking job, you made me look amazing. You guys forgot about all the slaves. You forgot <laughs> the slave I own! Thanks, guys! And uh, dissected on stage as part of the show. Don't forget yeah. that. And that one time I put a How did you fish forget tail this? on a monkey and abused all my circus people. Like, thanks. Literally, this, I, I feel like you're just kind of making me a dick to my wife. At yeah. worst. <laughs> Which I was. You got it right. Sake. I feel like he would be offended that you left that stuff out. He'd be he would be like proud of it. He might be what? angry he'd that be the like, slave wasn't in it, true. I, yeah, he'd why, be like, why that I, was one of my best acts. my slave? <laughs> you had all the time for the singing and dancing, but no time. No time for my best act. No time for my best act. I sent a slave in front of everyone. Cut this. <laughs> Uh, all right um we'll see you next time on musicals with cheese that was our big six episode hope you're not disappointed because all you want to do all you want to do baby is touch me when will enough be enough see all you want to do all you want to do baby is squeeze me don't care if you don't please me bite my lip and pull my hair <laughs>